heart. And since then, we had the pleasure of listening to Mark's TED Talk, which was a great achievement. And I'm sure he is very, very proud, as well as we are in here. And while I was listening to it, it actually resonates with me and what I'm going to tell you all this evening about making it count, rising above afraid and coming out from being safe. So well, this week, it's all about me. I have the pleasure now of doing a sort of a mini podcast style with Madalena. So are you ready to go, Madalena? I'm ready to go because I distinctly remember it was November last year, and we were at a meeting of the ambassadors, as we always do every Monday. And we asked you, Mary, what about you hosting a, a meeting? And you said, no, no, I cannot host a meeting. I'm not ready to host a meeting. So the question I have for you is, what stopped you from hosting a meeting what you're doing now so beautifully and masterfully and so gladly what was what stopped you back then the end of november last year this is just five months ago madalina thank you for that opening question well back then when you and sharma one monday evening and you were talking about hosting and you put the question to me would you like to host and i thought Oh my God, me host a meeting? No, I can't do that. I cannot go there. That is not me. How am I How am I even going to say anything? When Madeline is on, she flows. Everything comes out, it flows. When Shama's on, it flows. If Seamus or anybody else is on, it all flows. And I thought, how could I do that? I'm no way near that at all. But anyway, Shama and Madalina kept talking. So I thought, okay then, maybe there's a little step I can take. So they suggested co-hosting. So I said, okay. I knew co-hosting was Shama was a safe space. I still knew that I had that support, that crutch, right? And I knew she was going to be there. So I said, okay then. And Shama says, we'll, we're going to work four Wednesdays together. And I thought, oh my gosh, right, co-hosting. Okay, I, I will be in a safe environment. But yet the fear was there within me. So anyway, Shama then would meet. And her building blocks was, we'll, I'll get you. She would email me the, the structure. And I always remember she would have her part in green and my part in blue. And when I would get the email, I would look at it and say, oh, gosh, there's loads of green. So I knew I was safe. Sharma was going to do most of it. And I would look down through where the blue and I said, oh, I've only a little bit to do. So I'll be OK. So she would get me to read me a, a few sentences or maybe a paragraph or the closing. Well, by the time I got to the closing of the of the meeting, I was home and dry. I was getting out the door. There was an exit. So from that point, then I just started to, you know, each each Wednesday, I was thinking, yeah, you know, this is good. You know, there's there's something here. But I always still felt safe because I knew Madalena was there. Sharma was there and they weren't going to leave the room. They weren't going to leave me on my own. So that's that's where it got to Madalena. And when you feel back then, then in the fear, what was actually causing the fear? Was it your sense? I'm just going to give you a hint because this is what we felt, most of us, that you're not, you, you were not able to control how people are going to react to what you're going to say or do. Absolutely, Madeline. I had this fear, right? Because I thought, oh, girl, what am I going to say? What am I going to fall back on? There was panic coming into me. 
And when I think back then, Madalena, the fear was coming from my childhood. So I will explain now where this deep seated fear came from. Now, this might be a challenge for me. I remember when I was in fifth class and I was asked to read one day by the master. And he said, Mary, read the next paragraph. So I started off the paragraph and I was doing OK. But suddenly I stopped. And he said, Mary, will you just carry on? And I said, I can't. From that day onwards, I did everything to protect myself from reading. For years after that, th through secondary school and through my nursing. The coping mechanisms that I used was to become invisible keep the head down and just hope that I would never be noticed. The secret life of I can't read. Even though deep down I knew I was as good as anyone else. But the fifth class nightmare always had control of me. I always felt I wasn't good enough. My self image went down that day until now. When I was talking to Shama about this and how she worked with her students, having them read one sentence at a time and then a few more sentences and then a paragraph. It's a pity I didn't have someone like Shama back when this happened in, in fifth class how things could be different. And even when I went through my nursing, I was a good student, but I didn't get my exams. And the reason was my self image let me down. Even though the person I married got his exams and went all the way to the top in his nursing. And for years and years, I could never figure it out why he got there and I didn't. After all, I was a good student as well. But it was my self-image. His is much better. For Shama, that's where the fear came out of. The day I couldn't read or finish reading in fifth class. And what helped you also to feel safe at our meetings? Did you feel this sense of, I'm entering when a meeting starts of your Holistic Academy in our Alliance, I'm entering a safe, I personally call it also sacred space where no matter what I do, no matter what I say, no matter how I behave, no one is going to judge me because I am equal part of a beautiful community where the only language we have for each other is love. Shama or Madalena, it has taken me a lot of courage and strength to tell the story. Not everybody knows about the story. Actually, very, very few. The reason I have chosen to this space is I feel safe in here. I feel the support and warmth of the community. I feel there's a healing in this group for me. And I know that everyone in here is to cheer each other on and rise together no matter what. And I feel as like being amongst a family. I feel there's no judgment. I feel at home. Beautiful. And this is what this uh, community is about, right? So 
with the support of our beautiful community, you dare to embark on a journey of healing and transformation so that visibility does not threaten you anymore, right? No, Shatma, no, no, Madalena, it doesn't. And and so I how, how do you feel now on the other side, let's say of the veil where all of a sudden you feel very comfortable with hosting, with being visible and so on. So if someone asks you, what was the, the breaking point? If someone approaches you and says, I, I have the panic of speaking out, of hosting, what would be your first sentence you're going to tell this person? Madalena, I would say definitely take, take the courage, take the confidence, build on it. Start with taking small steps forward, like what I did with the co-hosting. Surround yourself with the environment that's going to help you, like in here, like you and Sharma helped me. I was in that environment. Do something every week to help yourself move forward. Even try a 21-day challenge to get yourself moving there. And start building the blocks forward to get someone that has already done this. So I work with Sharma because she's a master host. And Madalena, you're the same. You're a master host. So I was in between the two of you, right? So that energy was coming to me. You know, you were guiding me along like a little chick. You know, bringing me along different steps. So I say definitely get somebody that has done it to bring you to where you work, where, where you want to go. And working with Shama, building those blocks. It becomes, you get to that stage that you realize you're ready, that you can do this, that you are enough. I feel this even, I am enough that I can do this. But it has taken that length of time as well, Madalena, to actually come here this evening and say, you know, I can do this. It's like having that faith. It's that change. It's that courage. A lot of it is courage as well, and the confidence, but the environment as well. You and Shama bringing me along. Would you be willing to assist someone on his slash her journey from breaking through anxiety of being visible to daring to be visible and enjoying it just like you're enjoying it now? Would you be willing to, to be this guide and inspiration and empowering person for this? Absolutely, uh, Madalena. Because I can, I can see now the other side of it, like from coming from fear to faith. And it's like going through a terror barrier. Like, it's not easy. It, it was challenging, like, but what I feel now, I'm on the other side of that terror barrier this evening. It's just a great feeling, actually, to be on the other side. But again, it's down to the community that I'm in here. Thank you. Um... Mary and I feel in my heart it's the time I'm going to change the the view so that everyone is on the screen. Could we please wholeheartedly give an applause to Mary for her courage, for her achievement, for her um, from our hearts because the job she is doing it's really incredible. And please know that we all, with no exception, are proud of you. Even if I get emotional, then you know that it's true. So I'm very proud of you, Mari. I can't tell you. I'm very proud of you tonight. Shama, thank you so much, Shama. And it's so hard touching that two members of our community have gone from ordinary to extraordinary, whatever that means to everyone. And we're celebrating now, and they are two Irish people. Let's let's highlight the Irish spirit here, <laughs> even we are not all Irish, but I feel in my heart that your achievement mark in its size, if there is a size of achievement, it's as big as what Mary is here um, 
showing to all of us. I distinctly remember how she said, no, no, hosting is nothing for me. And it's only <laughs> a couple of months to challenge her, to support her and to go with her to a point where, so I'm talking to every single one, one by one and inviting people to host. So there will be hosts every week. One different person is going to host. So get ready, everyone. And if you need any guidance, assistance, we're here for you. You will never be judged. And how do people know that you made a mistake? This is us who think, oh, I did not stick to the agenda. Who knows how the agenda is? No one knows it. So thank you, Mary. This is such an inspirational story. As a follow-up of, of Mark's story, beautiful. So what are the questions you have or insights or something just sharing from your heart to the heart of Mary? All right, the question. All right, so we're going to go to uh, uh, No, we are still with the energy. No, no, we are still in the energy of question and answers to what you just presented. All right, okay. So Shama, go ahead. Murray, it's not so much a question, but if I can just say to you, I am so proud of you, of what you've done today. It's, I mean, one, because, you know, um, we actually worked through January together. So, you know, you said that I showed you I did this, but remember, this is your learning. This is your courage. And you did it because you wanted to deep down, right? So I'm very, very proud of you. Right. And your story really touched my heart tonight, you know, of that fear. I know we talked about it a few times, but the depth of it has really touched me tonight. And even more so than, you know, where you were to where you are tonight. It's it's absolutely amazing. So well done. Well done. I mean, if I can ask you, what's next? <laughs> uh, Shama, next is I want to present to a group of women in midlife who actually have some personal story within them that's holding them back, like the way I can't read help held me back. So I want them to see that they can move forward and blossom like a butterfly. Wow. So you can actually include your own experience yes. and, and understanding of yes. where you were and you can understand where they are and move them in the same way. Absolutely. Fantastic. Yes, Beautiful. thanks, Sharma. Thank you very much for your comments, Sharma. Thank you. When do you want to do this, Mary? Give us a date. <laughs> <laughs> I, I... <laughs> so do I have to come back to a date here, Madalena? Well, at least uh, order this by the universe as a time frame, because you know how universe, God, yeah. creator works. If you say by the end of the year 23, I'm happy to host it. It's a message which goes to the universe. That's what, of course, I made a joke. Uh, but if you feel in your heart that you want to declare it now or at another meeting, please declare it in this safe, sacred space. Yes. Because Mark, for example, said it beautifully. In 2023, I'm going to be on the stage of, of TED Talks. So if that resonates with you, in a year 2023, I'm going to fulfill my wish with taking yeah. the next steps. Please declare it in a here in our group, as I said, at other meeting and so on, because words have power, enormous powers, we all know, right? Well, uh, Madeline, I'd like to present at the end of May, the last day in May. 2023? Yes. Yes, Beautiful. keep the momentum going now, Marlena. Excellent. Yes. So we all heard it. Yeah. And if there is anything we can support you with, yeah. I allow myself to, to say it out loud on behalf of everyone here that we are all gladly going to support you. Oh, Donald, thanks for that. So... Oh, Donald says, so raw, real, courageous and free and Mary, You have shown us how to shed an unnecessary load. Donald, thank you very much for that. Yeah. That's exactly. It is being courageous and it is being raw. in Because in, I said very few people 
know about the story. Because I did, I just didn't, part of me felt ashamed actually to share it. Or part of me felt like, oh, you must be the only one in on this planet that couldn't read. That's what held me back as well. Like I was thinking, well, everybody can read at school. You must have been the only one on this earth that could not read. So actually for me to share the story and hear this evening is absolutely, it just shows the community that's in here. Because I don't even think I've ever, ever shared it with my, even with my sisters or with people at work over the last number of years. So that's, it really shows what this community is like, that there's no judgment in here. And I am really, really grateful. I am so, so grateful to be able to come in here this evening and share the story. It means so, so much to me. And it means so much to us because this trust you're putting in this group yeah. is not only heart touching, it's beyond words. So yeah. I can see on the faces, I see men who are touched to tears and this is beautiful. It is really, really beautiful. So, uh, James, go ahead. All right, uh, Dr. Madalina. I uh, just wanted to say thank you so much, uh, Maria, for sharing that uh, story. You know, um, I, I'm working on, uh, you all know that I'm working on the foundation project. And it's been a very, there's a lot of work that has been going on on the backstage. And now I'm at a point of my, I'm at a point whereby it seems like ah, it's going to be a mission impossible, even though I have a lot of support, but still I'm at a point whereby I'm afraid that would I be able, I'm capable, I have the courage to start, and uh, I believe in the vision, but will I have the right support to to get it, to get it, uh, to get it, to get it going? So. Yeah, that is where I am right now. You have lifted my faith tonight. Uh, thank you so much. Oh, James, that's great. You go for it. Yeah. You go for it. You'll get there. Mary, can I say it too? Your story is wonderful because so many people are never even aware of the reason why they don't do something. So many people, you know, have the fears built up and never get to the point where they confront the reason for the fear. Um, so that and it's a, a huge starting point in anyone's journey when they start to understand that and address that and move that on. And I know you advertise yourself as a career coach. I know that's the kind of piece you've been in. If you don't mind me asking, is that the piece you've been in because you weren't told your story yet? Is that where you're going to be in six months' time? That is interesting, uh, Mark, because now I think I'm taking a different road. Well. I've heard your voice now and we spend our lives trying to find that voice. And when we find our voice, yeah. it doesn't, it, we can't hold it back any longer. Yeah. That is so, that's a revelation as well for me, Mark. Because maybe it's not career coaching at all. It's something else deeper. Mm, yeah. Well, then you go for it, Mary. Mark, thank you so much. <laughs> And can I add to that, to, to what Mark said, can I add to that? and basically just do it. It took me half a lifetime in conventional numbers to realize, to actually acknowledge what I've known since my 20s in terms of my sensitivity, my awareness, my inner calling and all kinds of challenges and not expressing it to the world because I couldn't because and I when I then started doing my training and my crisis I had to in my particular path I had to deal with an awful lot of crap from mm. growing up from ancestral conditioning and by the way 20 something years later I'm still clearing lots of that because it pops up and bites you in the butt when you least expect it but that's part of the journey it's not something to be afraid of no, that's yeah. right, Jim. That's right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. What a ripple effect your story has on everyone mm -hmm. now, but wait until you see what happens when we put this on the YouTube channel and all of a sudden 
months after we have had it today on April 26, someone comes to you and says, your story gave me the permission to give myself the permission to go for what my heart guides me to. So the journey has yeah. just started, uh, Murray, of how you're going to impact the lives of others, even not knowingly. So absolutely, Madalena, yes, absolutely. Mary, may I also make a comment? So I really found your story incredibly touching. And, you know, I I failed myself through life um, and don't really. Sometimes I beat myself up, but, you know, I failed myself through university um, and people thought I would never make it. I didn't thought I would ever make it. But at some stage, you'll find something that's so part of your of your being and so part of your life and purpose, then um, grabbing that and going with it, like Marx encourage you to go with what you feel now is, is the, the path forward, reminds me of, of Bill Bartman. Bill Bartman was the most unrecognized billionaire, and he had a, a coaching uh, series on the iLearning Global, where I I subscribed to many years ago. And the first the first three steps of his goal setting program was think big, trust yourself, and then do the scariest thing of all, share your vision. People might say to you, well, you know, you keep your keep your head in the clouds, Mary, but keep your feet on the ground. And here's the comment from Peter Medawar, who is the father of trans plantation surgery with respect to your science be humble because you're going to fail and you're going to fail off but with respect to your fellow man you've got to be very haughty because you cannot afford to be laughed out of a good idea so don't let people laugh you out of a good idea so but fantastic mary thank you han thank you very much Thank Beautiful you. Beautiful work. Thank you.